Hey there guys, today we're going to be looking at doing a simulation in Excel. Uh, it's going to be quite a simple simulation, but it's a very interesting one nonetheless. It's called Conway's Game of Life. And what we're going to be doing here is setting it up within Excel. I'm going to actually run through the entire process this time. So not like the last video where I just threw a model at you guys. This time I'm actually going to build it uh, so you can see that process uh, and see my kind of train of thought as I'm building it and then we can actually see if it works or not. Uh, that could be quite interesting. Um, and the actual simulation itself, the Game of Life simulation, is is a pretty cool concept anyway. So it's quite a nice uh, double whammy, so to speak. Uh, so I guess let's crack on. Um, first thing we need to do is look at uh, what the Game of Life is. So if we quickly look at um, Wikipedia, Game of Life, I've already uh, put this up. Basically, uh, we've just got a series of rules, right? And if you follow these rules, you get cool patterns like this. Uh, basically, it's kind of like an emergent property, right? You just do a very few uh, simple rules here, yeah, just four rules. And we you get a series of cool patterns. This is one type of pattern. This is called a glider gun. Uh, and we actually try to implement this in Excel. Um, but you can do, a, oh, there's a whole bunch of cool patterns. Basically, you could just start off with a random series of, of uh, cells, so to speak, uh, that are alive, and then just watch them kind of expand or dissipate depending on how these rules operate on them. Uh, and so we're going to try this in Excel now. Now, the cool thing is, this is a perfect thing for Excel, right? Uh, it's a game of life, it is uh, an infinite two-dimensional square of cells right square cells I mean where have you seen that before if not like Excel right that's perfect um, and then uh, the only issue here infinite right so uh, Excel's not you don't have infinite cells going in all directions nor would you want to because the computer would just um, uh, have a problem with that uh, in terms of memory or whatever it is so what we're going to do is is cheat a little bit here and actually have some uh, limits. Uh, so it's not a perfect representation of the of the game of life, but it's a good start, and we can kind of go from there. Um, so what I like doing when implementing something like this or, or anything really is to kind of do a base case or like a, a simple small scale test of that simulation in Excel and once I can see that that simple small scale solution is working, I can then very quickly expand it, but always with the view to expanding it when I'm creating that initial base case. Uh, so let's have a look at what I mean by that. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a few formatted sheets here. Uh, let's just create two for now. Uh, let's delete this one. Uh, and sheet six, I guess we'll rename this to uh, uh, current state. Let's call it that. That's going to be the current state of the game. Uh, and then sheet seven. Oh, let's see what we do with that. But what I'm going to do here is actually create a grid. Uh, so you may have seen this in some of my other videos. Uh, generally speaking, for anything graphical, you can just create a, a small grid. Uh, with small cells um, and then it kind of starts looking like a screen which is quite nice so if I if I've got a 20 by 20 here and then let's um, let's just get some borders in that uh, so already we're starting to look like something that would make sense uh, to represent the game of life so that looks quite nice um, and then what we're going to want to do is well, you're going to have a bunch of ones and zeros, alive or dead, right? So let's just put in a, a few ones, maybe put in a few zeros, let's put a few zeros in the rest. Now, put some zeros here, maybe put a few ones over there. So we could call this our kind of current state. So we've got a bunch of alive cells and a bunch of kind of dead cells or non-alive cells, I guess whatever you want to call it. Um, and what I'm going to do here, the, 
This again is something I've done in a bunch of my other videos for any kind of graphical representation. Conditional formatting is your friend here, right? So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that to be green. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is just go and edit that. I'm going to put in um, numbers here between 0 and 1. What I want is it for it to be white if it's 0 and black if it's 1. Um, that will give me this, which it's starting to look very similar to that, which is nice. Uh, the issue is, is that you can see the zeros. So again, here's a little trick. If you just edit the cells, and instead of it showing, say, a number, um, if you just put in two uh, inverted commas, uh, it will always show blank. Even though there's a value in there, you can't see the value. And that's actually what we want. We don't want to see any values. If we want to know, be able to know what those values are, which we can here because we have a graphical representation of those numbers, uh, which is good. But the 0 and 1s aren't ex displayed explicitly, right? Which is nice because we don't see 0 and 1s here. We just see kind of on or off toggles in terms of color, which is good. So we've got that representation. Um, so this is nice. We may get rid of these borders at some point, but it's good just for our trialing purposes to be able to see where we are when we're going around cells. If we got rid of them, it starts just becoming a bit more difficult to see where the cells actually are when we're working with them. So let's leave those in for now. Uh, so what we currently have is our current state, and that's, that's uh, perfect. Uh, that's literally exactly what we need as an initial um, initial part of our model uh, simulation but what we now need to do is start counting how many neighbors each cell has because once uh, if it if it so let's just go through the rules actually if a cell has fewer than two live neighbors it dies right if it's alive and it has fewer than two live neighbors it dies if, or if it's got uh, more than three neighbors, it also dies. Okay, so we can, we need to know how many neighbors each cell has already. So let's keep that in mind. Um, if any live cell has two or three live neighbors, it just lives on, so we don't do anything. So we kind of don't really care about that scenario because uh, nothing happens. But any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors actually becomes a live cell. So we kind of have two main, uh, two main situations that we need to allow for here. Um, and this is just, a, I guess it's summarized actually here. Any cell, live cell with two or three live neighbors survives and any dead cell with uh, three live neighbors becomes a live cell. Uh, so let's try implement those uh, in some kind of formula. So what we're actually gonna do here is what I like doing for these kinds of problems is to have different steps of the problem in different sheets but using the same format it becomes very easy to understand what's going on um, by just toggling through the sheets and everything's in the same location which is quite nice so what I'm going to do is just copy paste this sheet into here and we can see uh, what I want to do now is to uh, sum up the neighbors um, for each of these cells. So I'm actually going to get rid of the condition formatting here because we want to see the the numbers. Uh, so and I'll also just change this to general. Uh, so get it back to the numbers. And how do we look at numbers uh, neighbors? Right. All we have to do is actually just sum these guys, right? Because this will tell us. Oh, you've got well these. You can't have neighbors there because that's outside the sheet or outside the grid that we care about. But, um, you know, you've got one, two, three neighbors here. Now, the problem with this sum is it's actually going to sum the middle one as well. So let's just delete that or minus that from that calculation. So what this will do is just give us the number of uh, neighbors for this guy which is three perfect and very simply let's just copy that formula and now we can see oh that guy has eight neighbors is that true this guy has one two three four five six seven eight neighbors perfect 
So actually, we got all our neighbors here. Done. Calculation done. Let's call this neighbors. Easy days. And then what I'm going to do again is let's just add in our sheets and let's copy and paste this sheet across. And let's call this new state. So what this will do is it'll say, oh, okay, whatever our current state is, and depending on how many neighbors you have, will determine your new state based on those rules in the game of life, right? So let's try and implement these. If it's a live cell that has two or three neighbors, it survives, otherwise it dies, right? So let's just start writing that. If that is equal to one, then if that is equal to two or so we need to put in the or or part of the calculation there or it's equal to three then we stay alive right otherwise we die so that's if we're alive what I'm going to do here is actually just put these into different rows and to do that, in, when you're in a formula, if you want to put things in different rows, you can just put press Alt Enter. Um, so it's quite easy to read. Now I don't usually do this, to be honest, but for for this uh, for this video, I think it's quite helpful just to see what's going on here to explain it. So if the cell is equal to one, if that cell in the current state is equal to one, then if the neighbors for that cell are two or three, then stay alive otherwise die right but if the cell is equal to naught we're going to go here in the if statement here so if it's equal to naught we know that if our I think it was if our neighbors is equal to three I think it was then we actually so if we're dead we actually and we have three neighbors we actually become alive otherwise we stay dead so I think it was three any dead cell, three live neighbors becomes a live cell. So if you, if you're dead, you go here. And if you have three, then you become alive. Otherwise, you stay dead. Perfect. I think we have just implemented the game of life. Let's copy, and paste those formulae. As you can see, you're getting quite a nice little. That's that's looking very game of life esque. Not gonna lie. So that's looking pretty good. Um, so last thing we need to do in order to make this a simulation is actually just add in uh, the last step, which is copying the new state back into the current state, right? And that creates a, a loop, basically, right? You have your current state, you've got some calculations, you get to your new state. If you copy and paste your new state back into your current state, you now have a new current state which has new information about your neighbors, new calculation for you, for your new states are being created, which you can then copy paste back into your current states, etc, etc. So if I just copy that area and then go over here and press paste values, you'll notice that updates and that updates. And now, and here's a, a little hotkey F4 just repeats what you last did. So we'll repeat this copy paste pattern, copy paste values. So copy paste values. Copy. So I'm just pressing F4. And as you can see, we have a little bit of a game of life going on here. That is awesome. Done. Okay, so that looks that looks pretty cool. But what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to try implement this uh, glider gun because that looks that looks pretty cool. Uh, so I had a quick look at this before and actually, um, so the glider gun, if you start with this uh, series of cells, you get uh, your glider gun. It actually works from there. That's the kind of setup you need initially or some variation of that. That's within the kind of uh, within that that process. So what we're going to do here is try do that. Now, I think I counted there's about 30 columns and about nine, uh, I think it was like nine rows, something like that. 
so what we need to make sure is we have at least 30 columns and nine rows, but we only have 20 columns. So let's, uh, let's go for 50 rows and 50 columns. Now what I'm going to do here, I want that across all these sheets. So I'm going to highlight all these sheets by pressing shift and selecting all the sheets. So now they're all selected. And if I do any operation on those sheets, it actually impacts all the sheets. It, even if I only make that operation, which I am on one sheet, right? So I'm going to go down and let's, let's make 60 rows by 60 columns. And I'm not going to have 20 pixels. I'm going to have 10. Should we do 10? Uh, let's do like eight pixels. Right. And we need 60 again. Notice I'm not using the keyboard as much. That's just because it, it gets a little bit um, uh, it gets a little bit uh, noisy, I think, on the on the stream. But uh, um, it definitely would do that usually because it's quite a bit faster. But as you can see, we've got this area down here, and I'm just going to copy paste all of those. I'm um, just going to do that for all sheets independently. Uh, but you'll notice that the, I mean the the formulae are exactly the same. You know the the neighbor formulae and the uh, the game of life formulae are all the same. So this should work perfectly. Um, and let's just try one of these. So we'll just do that. And you'll see it turns into that, which is exactly what is happening here. This blinker. Uh, let's try another one. Let's just try the toad. So the toad is uh, this one, oops, and it turns into that, which is what happens here. So that's looking good. Looks like it works. So uh, let us try implement this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, bear with me for a moment. Alrighty, that looks like I've done that correctly. I mean, only time will tell. Uh, that looks about right. So let's, well, let's uh, let's do some copy pasting and see if that works. So here goes nothing. Remember, just pressing F4. Oh, there we go. There's a glider. There's another glider. This is awesome. There we go, another glider. Boom. Looks like it's working perfectly. So it looks like we have implemented Game of Life in Excel, which is pretty cool. And actually, what's nice, a little benefit here, is your... Uh, e even though they kind of get stuck on the side because we don't have an infinite set, the second glider kills the first glider. Uh, so we actually kind of eliminate that problem of not having uh, not having or having borders, I should say. Uh, well, this looks pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to save this on uh, on my GitHub again, guys. Um, literally just this model as is. Uh, so feel free to play around with it. Um, I guess you could even try changing the rules here. Uh, you know, that's a very simple set of rules. What happens if you change some of these slightly? Like, what happens if it's four, uh, two, three, or four? Um, then, uh, you know, so, like, things stay alive more often than uh, more often than this set of rules. Uh, and then what happens to the simulation when you do that, right? That would look pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, uh, feel free to uh, play around with the model. I'll add the model into the the description in the links below um, and as always please let me know if there's any particular stuff you'd like to see in this uh, series of uh, excel videos um, and otherwise until until the next one guys stay safe and be well cheers